Hello everyone and thank you for coming back to Deb Chanel's 48th World where we do reviews and right now we're going to be doing reviews on Meritor Medicine uh what was this season season 7 episode 16 the first reunion I'm just gonna tell you it was all just a recap a review but before I get into the um recap review thank you for coming to my channel sharing some time with me over here like a family affair we getting down and we talking about the issues okay and lord knows it was plenty of issues on this episode as well as part two of the reunion i got so tired of looking at it i was so frustrated i said i'm going to bed because <laughs> i didn't know which way i wanted to start with it because it was just that crazy i've never seen so many grown women on a show that would sit there and act like total crazy women and when we got down to season two they had interviewed the men in this beautiful closet and of course it wasn't eugene's closet he even said so said so himself he has definitely grown on me all right i used to think of him as a little itch getting all into females business which he still do but I don't upgraded him a little bit because he made me just laugh and chuckle. And I understand why men can make light of any situation. But we as women, we sit there, we go back and forth, we go back and forth, we go back and forth. And it's just, that's the way it is. Women are more cattier than men. So I was like, okay, fine, cool. Let's just get on into the episode. I'm going to tell you part one of the reunion was, like I said, a total recap a review, a revamp, however you want to see it, of the whole season, for season seven, all up to um, episode 16, and, you know, 15, 14, 13, everything that was shared in season seven, so don't get your panties all up in a bunch, because it was just boring, boring, like a church sermon, when you want to go and hear your pastor that get up, and they had a, um, what do you call it, um, Maybe your pastor was out doing something, they were sick or whatnot, and they couldn't attend service that Sunday, and you was all excited, you was just waiting for the word, and then they invite some guests to come in, and they don't know the church, they don't know what y'all talked about this uh, Sunday prior, and he was building up to, you know, something else this Sunday, and they get up there and talk about something else, and you be like, uh... <laughs> My week is shot. I am not getting my uh, cup full, okay, with the motivation and the energizing things that I need for uh, seven more days coming, okay? So it was kind of like that, lackluster. But anyway, we're going to go into that first scene. We've got Quad being featured first. She's telling about her life being a single uh, person and all the women having a say in it, you know, from why did dr heavily put you up with all these different men or two men that just weren't up to par not to your standards why did you let her do you like that and of course toy was like i could have did better and then dr heavily gonna feel some kind of way to my uh well i like to see you do better da, 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 da. well you know just a whole lot of drama that way then we go to simone simone's up dating the crew about quad's ex-husband uh gregory how he has moved on with a very extremely attractive person another woman of course and you know kind of trying like she was taking digs at quad for some reason which i didn't quite understand that but just is what it is evidently cecil and um simone has definitely kept in good contact cecil ain't gonna break his friendship with gregory just because him and quad decided to dissolve their marriage and in a sense they shouldn't if they had a good rapport being men and they like bonding with each other and this that and third because men have a stronger men code than women have with their girl codes because we just cat at nature i mean i personally try to stick to the girls code you know as much as possible but then you know you got five friends acting in out there or whatever you just got to get people straight you know i'm like solo dolo myself i know a lot of people i can hang with a lot of people but i'm telling you i can count my besties on one hand and half of them on this one hand is family members okay so i'm just saying keep your friends close but keep your family closer okay that's just how I, how, how I get down pretty much but uh because you got so many of your families that act like enemies so you don't <laughs> mm, that's another whole video and another whole story okay because sometimes you can get your um some people that act like you're uh like 
they're down for you like four flat tires they're not even your family members you in a sense um not graduated them in but you don't adopt them in as your family because they see you more fluently and transparent than your own family members that you were biologically born and raised up with so yes it is what it is but anyway simone is making some great effort to say you know uh gregory did speak kindly of you why would he speak bad of you you know what i'm saying just is what it is y'all just couldn't get it together because he was out there trying to cheat on you or you found some results that he was cheating on you just that and the third and you just had to move on miss quad i'm like go on honey them three women are big troublemakers you know what i'm saying i wish quad get another storyline because i'm so tired of her and mariah going back and forth back and forth bringing up shit that happened 20 30 years ago i'm like did it happen this year did it happen in uh in a year's time because if it's two plus years and more i don't want to hear about it because people change every day you know what i'm saying or they try to change and be for the better so we just got to get on the benefit of the doubt if it ain't happened in the last six months to a year i don't want to hear about it okay i don't want to hear about no drug uh usage uh allegedly uh scenarios i don't want to hear about nobody cheating on a uh, husband a wife whatever if it didn't happen within six months to a year it's in the past and really six months to a year is in the past as well because it's not happening currently as in today so quad i'm gonna need you to get another storyline for the next season that comes and mariah needs you to get another storyline too because this back and forth with you and claude it ain't working for me okay it's just not working for me i rather just not talk about y'all and just talk about the other women if y'all gonna keep going back and forth okay get some current news and then we can try to see if we can digest that okay then we got small she's telling claude to continue playing the victim the women argue and to try to break them up when the conversation i'm like and 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 <laughs> We know you gay, baby, but you ain't got all the estrogen flowing through you. So you were checking them, and I appreciate you. And I'm, I'm kind of sad that you were a gay man because you just, oh, he was looking good last night. I don't know why. Maybe he got his hair colored or maybe he got some facial things going on. But that was a good looking man last night. Yeah, sometimes I end it going, okay? But anyway, moving on from that situation, we go to the second scene. We got Quad and Simone still fussing, but Quad gives Simone an apology. Now that came out of left field. I'm like, what? <laughs> you don't set up and dog this woman all this time. Now you're going to be like, you right, you right. I apologize. I apologize. I'm like, girl, couldn't you have said that during the first scene and kept it moving? But it is, it is what it is. Then we got Andy talks to Dr. Hevler about what she was doing with fixing Quad up. Because then nobody understands those two scenarios. But she's saying, I knew them in college. How long ago that was, uh, Dr. Hevler? How long ago was that when you met these two brothers that you brought out? One of them looked like a hillbilly. And one of them looked like he needed to open up a soul food restaurant because he was eating good. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying, okay, because I get my fields, my fiddles, my vittles, and all that kind of stuff. Yes, I'm a heavy set woman as well. But like I said, I just got no diagnosed with gastritis. So y'all might be seeing a little slim as the year uh progress into 2020. Okay. Yes, it is what it is. I tell you, the stuff that you used to eat that you even think second thoughts about in your 20s and 30s. Woo, child, what do you hit them 40s? Well, I say late 40s, 50s, and 60s and see what we coming with, okay? But anyway, moving from that situation, that's my sidebar. Y'all know what I do. Okay, then we got a scene where Dr. Contessa talks about Tori spinning over excessively. You know, the... I'm like, can we get a, can we get another somebody? <laughs> Cause I'm so tired of Dr. Contessa. Okay, when it's on her, everything is lovely, everything is flowing beautiful. When the storyline is facing her, she likes it. But on the storyline, she's gave me, uh, just watching her this season was basically. Uh, a pity party you know she couldn't go do what she wanted to do but her husband get to go do what he wanted to do it's a different code when it comes to the men they don't you know look and see what women have to go through i'm like girl look at dr jack she doing it all but i really feel that if curtis was to go on let her adopt the child he'll have more time with his wife because she'll be spending more time with the uh, child or children and she will have to slow down you know what i'm saying because when you got children in the mix and you trying to do this that and the other child please ain't no way how to say ain't no way 
<laughs> that was Aretha Franklin, okay? Ain't no way, nah, honey. Mm-mm. You'd be like a bridge over troubled waters. Yes, honey. You mix them kids up into your uh, personal life, your be- well, not your personal life, but your business life and other things you want to get done. Then they have their own schedule. Ooh, talking about collision. Mm-mm. I'm just saying. And what, you know, Curtis would have let her adopt or something to that or have a surrogate uh, take some eggs from somebody else or whatnot and have a baby would that really be so bad Curtis it's just like I I I me 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 I want you to focus on me 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 you too grown you're a grown ass man and, and too big Ooh, you're like a little grown up grown ass tree out there basically so no 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 so I don't see Dr. um Waters, Dr. Jackie Waters, slow it down anytime unless you throw a child up in that mix. And then you're going to see another whole side of Jackie, or maybe more more nurturing, understanding side, less driven side. I'm talking to Curtis now. If you feel what I'm feeling and you can understand what I'm saying, you got eyes to hear, you got um, ears to listen, try to have a baby with uh, Jackie. I'm pretty sure you'll see another whole side of her, and she'll be at home cooking. She'll probably be taking cooking lessons. Y'all be taking more trips, because she that's what she wants. Her career and that house is her baby. That's what you left her with. So that's why she gets a little bitter here and there. Just talking about what I see. I'm a woman talking about another woman, and that's where her faults lie. But if way you want to keep that ignoring her, then she's going to keep on building to her empire empire and it's still gonna come up she's gonna be a little miss scrooge over there for us over with mm-hmm. that's my opinion that's my viewpoint and that's where i'm going with it okay then well, i missed up I, I, I got on jack you know i my sidebars be going each and everywhere but it just is what it is okay but anyway we're gonna go back to contessa i don't know why contessa feels she had to put two cents in on everybody's situation and somehow it always flows either she cussing out Dr. Heavily or is she picking on Toya. And people just don't understand. When you got it like that, you got it like that. If your husband ain't claiming to feign that you know you need to get out there and get a job, why would you? Why would you? I wouldn't. If I had a husband sit up there and say, honey, do, do your thing. Do you too. Don't worry about it. I got you. Man, I'd be standing on this tube doing, you know, whatever, probably doing something else. But I'd be there cooking, cleaning and, and, and catering to his needs, too. But it won't be on, oh, I have to make this deadline. Oh, I have to make that deadline because I like what I do professionally. I really, really do. I get up every morning and it's just the whole task of getting up out the bed. You know what I'm saying? But once I get settled, I'm cool. I love, I love what I do. Thank you, employer. Okay. But anyway, um, and this is my second job. This is where I get my second income. I can't go out there on another job now. Mm-mm, tried that many, many moons ago. And mm-mm, YouTube is where it's at. If you got a personality, you got good content, you like to talk, please get your YouTube channel. It's okay. All right. Just like to put up with trolls here and there, you know, putting their own spin on things instead of getting their own YouTube channel and then see what it feels like to be in the driver's seat. And you have to put up with trolls coming around telling you how to operate your channel okay but like i said you can't have that perspective if you've never been in a seat so that's just another story right there too and i might do a video about it one day but i'm not too much interested in doing that i like what i do when i'm talking about other people's situations okay especially when they put it out on front street because i Damn, Joe ain't finna go out there and investigate on subject matter. I'm not the paparazzi, okay? I just report what the paparazzi put down there first, all right? And I do say my show is totally allegedly, okay? We just give entertainment how we see it, how we view it, and we move on to the next subject matter, okay? Get into it. But yeah, Contessa, I always talk about what Toya ain't got. I'm like, damn, do you want to have Toya life? Do you want to not have kids? I mean, it just is what it is. Uh, Toya floats beautifully. She feel like, okay, she got a badass house and she got a badass closet. I'm just telling you, I love it. And she has a pleasing personality. She get people told her in a nice way. Then if she had to go to war, she go to war. But 
on the upside you will always want uh toya in your corner at least 80 percent of the time you know what i'm saying because she do have some funky funky ways funky moves as well but if i had to put up with her or dr heaven i'm gonna choose toya all day if i had to put it up with her or contessa i'm gonna choose toya all day hell i would choose toya off all of them okay she would be my first draft pick all right and then we're just going then i think i would add you know add simone <sighs> <laughs> then the rest of, I, I, I probably add Buffy too But we have to put tape on Buffy Mouth sometime when she starts to say She the it factor, she the it girl She the, she has this, she had it Then we got to put her on, okay We just look for her for financial contributions For here and there, how we want to get down Other than that, we just want her to sit on the sidelines Okay, but um yeah, I didn't like to contest her. I mean, she's a doctor. She's very well known in the community. Oh, I should say in the medical community. But her social skills are just not good. They're not good. It's like she's half jealous, half envious, half uh, somewhat like to flatter you. But you know it's kind of coming from a condescending attitude. So you just don't really know how to take her. I, I don't. I'm still trying to figure her out. Okay. I'm just like, go to school, get your degree, and then come and do something else. Okay. Or maybe get off the show. Because you... <laughs> You're really not giving me nothing anyway. But anyway, moving on from there, we got Dr. Hevelin. Dr. Hevelin says everyone knows uh, you big borrowed stole to get that house. I'm like, Heavenly, Dr. Heavenly. I'm just going to call you Heavenly because right now you ain't acting correct. You ain't acting professional. So we're just going to get into your personal side of you and just be like, what the hell are you talking about, Dr. Heavenly? Why are you always talking about somebody bed, borrow, or stole? Did you bed, borrow, or steal to get your house, boo? Why are you always on Toya? I mean, it's almost like you want to be Toya, too. I mean, the girl wants to do what she wants to do, how she do it. Let her do it. Let her be free like the wind, okay? She sees life totally different from what you see, and her... Um, goals and ambitions are totally different. Let that girl live. Let that girl live, child. But anyway, Dr. Jack, I mean, Dr. Heavenly always, you know, tries to put Latoya down. Like, you know, everybody got a house. Everybody ain't got no house, honey. Everybody don't float like you. Everybody don't have a professional job like you and this, that, and third. And you say you always love your job and this, that, and third, but then you always putting other people down. Like, damn, Dr. Heavenly, sit down somewhere. Go, you know, go fix your teeth or whatever. Leave Toya alone. My goodness, if she want to have a two-story house, I mean, two-story closet, a beautiful house mansion, like she's running in the entertainment field, or she's a lawyer, a very lucrative lawyer, or a lucrative doctor with specialties out the wazooka, you know, let, let her live, you know what I'm saying? You are not the author of her being, her alpha and omega of her creator. Come on. Ooh, Dr. Heavenly, Dr. Heavenly, Dr. Heavenly. And then kind of find out, you went and made you added addition on your closet and made you a three-story uh, closet fixture up there. Are you competing with Toya and you're not telling us about it? Are you completely trying to be like Toya? I mean, yeah, I'm just wondering. I'm just wondering. Are you? Do you want to be Toya, Dr. Heavenly? Girl, I'm just saying. And stop tooting your nose up. I mean, every time you look at you, you're mad. It's like you're mad about something. You know, I'm like, damn. Check your facial features every few seconds when you're on TV. You're more, uh, seem like you're yourself when you're doing your own little YouTube channel over there trying to give your commentary. Totally different person, even though it's centered around you. And I think that's what it is. You want to be center of attention. You don't lost your way. Now you're out here calling people fat. And I'm like, come on, Dr. Heavenly. <sighs> okay, moving on from you. Okay, we got Dr. Jack. I didn't know Dr. Jack could give Botox shots because she said she tightened up Dr. Heavenly. Maybe Dr. Jack had just used Dr. Heavenly for her income to get her spending more money and it bringing it to her. Because I'm sure she ain't doing it for free. I'm just saying. Maybe she making her pay for the product itself and not the services she's being rendered or receiving from Dr. Jack. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, just deal with it. Because Andy pretty much using them all. Because I think Andy Cohen has a... Chat me fat, Jack, because he has like a, a publishing company. And I hear that's where Dr. Jackie got her uh, recent book she put out. Uh, she got it going through um, 
um, Andy Cohen's publishing company. So she's already got a head start of the game because everybody know Andy Cohen. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, cool. Come on, glasses. Okay. But anyway, uh, yeah. So when Jackie made that statement about I would leave the show if I had to. Um, what she said? If I had to choose between uh, my friends on the show or uh, if I had to choose between Simone or Dr. Heavenly, I would leave the show right now. I was like, Andy, put her to the test. Put her to the test. So, okay, girl, uh, you just leave now. If, you, if you're if you saying you don't want to go on, if we get another season, uh, season eight for uh, Married to Madison, you know, put it in writing before you go that you won't be on the show. I would have just called her bluff if I were Andy. Like, uh, security, y'all got that written down. So when we go back to the bargaining table, Jackie is saying on live television, she don't want, she don't want to be a part of the show anymore. <laughs> and I'm like, do you really think that we think, or let me put it back, let me retract. Do you really think that I think that you all are friends, how y'all act? Because uh, mm -mm, you ain't going to show me out or show me up on TV and thinking I'm going to let you show me up like that and we're going to be good. Ooh, child. Mm -mm. Then Buffett believe in your lies about, ooh, I would just give up my child if I had one. And we know how much you want to child, Jack. Are you serious? Girl, I don't think it. Mm, I mean, you good. And you do have a heart. You do have a soul. But do I really personally think you're going to give up your own baby to give to Buffett because she ain't got no baby? Girl, please. You could sell that, that line to somebody else because I know it didn't sell here. It it lost its steam when you said you would do that uh, blessed thing is give your baby away to somebody else that's barren. I'm, no, mm -mm. I don't believe it, Jack. I, I don't believe it. it's proof it's in the pudding, I guess. But I would just have to really be there and see you pass up that baby. Because I think once you pass up that baby, you'll have a heart attack. You'll fall out on the floor. You'll lose your mind, Jack. So I know you in the moment, and I know you were trying to save, save faith or face on the community because I know they dogged your butt out once you finally saw the replay of what you said and what you did and how it could have been misconstrued that you were empty and heartless when you did that mess with Buffy at your party or your uh, book revealing party calling her infertile and you were infertile and everybody else in the room was infertile girl please so I think a lot of people had thought about reporting you to the medical facility or the medical association. You know, like they have a bar association for lawyers. I'm sure they have a medical association for doctors as well. And you were very unprofessional. I think you were just trying to clean it up. You know, that's what I think. Check him. You know, I'm just giving you my spiel, my other viewpoints, if you would like to hear them. But it's just neither here nor there. You did an excellent job on apologizing for the very fourth time. I'm tired of hearing hearing about it hopefully Buffy received it she says she received it she wants to have lunch with you outside of the group thinking she can form a better relationship with you all I don't know push heavily out the way but since she got heavily look like on her her uh, hip <laughs> then before the reunion was over with Dr. Heavenly said can I have a hug <laughs> But it's like, get away from me. You no, know you can't have no hook. I'm like, now that's what I'm saying, Buff. I would love to see you come back next season. But you can just drop the ad that everybody wants to be you or be around you because you got money. Leave that at the doorstep. Show us the personality that you and Jackie was trying to forge on camera because that was a beautiful scene. Uh, do I think it's going to happen? I think y'all probably go out for maybe one or two lunches but y'all gonna find out that y'all really have nothing in common and that it would just be a sense of um how we say being cordial to one another when y'all are in the circle of y'all uh peers on this show because i don't think either one of you all want to leave y'all may not be asked to come back because of the ratings and how people feel about you all but neither one of you all are willing to leave the show because if you could you could have did it after maybe the first three seasons but y'all know that this money is additional especially with the ones that are doctors this additional money and the platform can help you do a lot more of what you want to do. Now, do I think you'll run it to the ground to merit the medicine ends up? 
uh, being uh, canceled and they don't move on to another show or another a reality a sitcom they're trying to develop. Yeah, I think all of you all would run it to the very end. And why wouldn't you? You know, if y'all are comfortable in it, uh, just milk it till it's dry. You know, they don't want you no more. But don't go taking yourself off a show. And you know, you need the revenue, especially if you don't elevate it yourself to a level that uh, you can't withstand it within your professional career. Because I'm telling you, there's so many people trying to move into the uh, music industry and the entertainment industry, whether you have a talk show or radio uh, personality show or whatever. It must pay a hell of a lot more money than being a professional. And uh, uh, you would once thought a lucrative career in the medical field. But I guess hmm, entertainment world supersedes it all. But anyway, we're moving on from there. Then we got Tori talks about. Uh, her miscarriages they were showing Toya's uh, new house and her closet and they were going back subsequently on some of her past where they just touched a little bit on her miscarriage and stuff and she got to talk about um, what's his name her husband Eugene when they having sex or whatever he you know uh, don't pull out or whatever you can't trust that pull out um, method either because you end up getting pregnant I mean come on shoot but anyway that's not practical this and safe sex that's just practicing stupidity <laughs> oh, because eugene is not shooting blanks up there okay he got his soldiers marching on if you get my drill but you know tori's not ready i guess at this point mentally so whenever she becomes mentally eugene will be ready they're lock loaded and ready to spray all up in her okay and bring them babies out but as her and his choice, and it just is what it is. But it seems like Eugene forging head anyway. If it happens, it happens. You know, he ain't coming out. He feel that's his wife. That's his uh, little bunny. He going to do what he want to do with it. Just as long as he do it respectfully. And it's not painful for Toya. Okay. Too much information. Let me move on. Okay. Uh, then we got... Um, Toya saying that... Um, Dr. Hevelin always bashing her when it comes to her home. And she says uh, Dr. Hevelin is jealous of her. And, of course, Dr. Hevelin is trying to defend herself. Like, what do I got to be jealous of you for? You know, my house is paid for. And this, that, and third, and yours is not. And, you know, Dr. Hevelin just going way, just punching at the kneecaps. <laughs> she done went below the belt. She had the kneecaps, punching uh, Tori's kneecaps out with uh, the the spewing of venom that she's trying to put all over Toya uh, and her endeavor she has achieved. You know, it's talking about, well, you know, it just is what it is. And, you know, she ain't even got no furniture in her house. She having a housewarming party, but we ain't in her house. We on the outside <laughs> being entertained. I said, well, hell, you on the, you on the property, aren't you? She ain't say y'all were going to have a housewarming party in the house. Yes, that's traditional, and that's what we do, and we do bring gifts and stack them up against the wall or whatnot. But Toya said, I don't want y'all in my house yet. <laughs> I invited y'all, but the party is outside, okay? We having a party barbecue back here. And, of course, Toya was telling everybody that she purchased her home for $2.1 million. That was the purchase price and all this, that, and the third. And Toya said, hey, I had to scrape, save, and whatever. But Dr. Heavenly said she had to uh, borrow, steal, and beg to get what she got. I'm like, honey, just as long as she signed on that dotted line or Eugene signed on that dotted line line for 2.1 million she can do whatever she want to do ain't nobody coming at her door ain't no popo showing up saying she don't rip somebody off of this property and she need to vacate so i'm like eat your feces dr heavenly and croak over okay pretty much just leave it alone toy you're living her best life you need to live your best life okay and damn you got a good ass man sitting up there by you and you sitting up there causing all this chaos and envious and stuff oh toy please leave her alone toy tells dr helen you are a hater <laughs> You are a hater of mine. And I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. You can hate all you want while I elevate. That's what Toya told her. Toya, you know, like I said, I don't understand how Dr. Heavenly can have a two-story closet. Toya has a two-story closet. But when she found out Toya has a two-story closet, she went on to build her a three-level uh, 
closet and i'm like girl and it still don't match toya's closet okay toy looks like something that came out of a, a child's toy house or something and it was just beautiful but yeah that's just how it goes that's what dr heavenly was giving us sour puss face over toy then we can move on to the third scene we got andy finally brings out buffy purcell um, he gives her a compliment and, you know, he's just being soft glued with her because we don't want her to go into any crime spell and, and, and be hollering on the scenes because this is a reunion. We ain't going back in the past, but they were just showing little clips and stuff and they were showing Toya's little sip and paint party and how Dr. Jackie was looking very uncomfortable, but it was okay. She was taking in all the male anatomy at its finest and you had dr heavenly asking the boy to come over so she can get a closer view but hey if damien would have said that to a, a female uh model that was showing all of her birthday suit oh she would have been mad and i'm like see what's good for the goose is good for the gander i'm right on with cecil when he said that mess i'm like honey it's some insecurities with dr heavenly somewhere some way because way back when i know she has expressed something on one of those shows i can't say which episode or which season it was but i remember she's saying she lost the weight for daddy i mean she lost the weight for her man so i'm like dr heavenly you got some very deep rooted uh seated issues that you need to sit on somebody's couch and work them out okay because how you're fawning over what you don't want your husband to do but then you want to do a double standard and do what you want to do and hopefully he don't find out about it because you ain't gonna tell him about it uh type of mentality and that's not good not good at all um then toya makes a little crazy gesture you know and they do a clip on it um i think it was seasons i think it was this season she made a statement about you need to taste yourself before you let others taste you <laughs> that girl is crazy okay but she speaks the truth her truth anyway and then who was it it was and i think he said something about is that true do your um you know flavor down there in the vagina area does it do uh depends on what you eat do you actually taste it down there or whatever and all the women were saying yeah 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 that's true and so he asked dr jackie and dr jackie said oh you trying to take my secrets you got this you got to get the book and you got to i'm like dr heaven the hell i mean dr heaven dr dr jackie you could have told us that little bit because people gonna buy your book regardless and the people that don't buy your book it just is what it is but anyway uh that was funny that was truly 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 funny but um that that's not quad honey quad said it on the download but we all heard it i caught it i caught it thank you wink wink uh quad said yes honey fruits if you eat a lot of fruits yes and then dr jackie was trying to tell her hush don't be telling all of so you just keep stay silent i'm like okay fruits so y'all know if y'all eat a lot of fruits, if you eat a lot of strawberries or melons or whatever, if you dare to taste yourself down there, smell yourself, see what it does smell like or taste like. It ain't come back and let me know. Okay. But anyway, um, let me see. We go to Buffy. Buffy has had women in her college days. Yeah, Buffy saying in Georgia State University, hun, up here allegedly, cause, but that ain't really allegedly because that's what Buffy said. She was tasting her own female. She was a, had a little lesbian thing going on when she was in college. She was dropping it like it was hot, and it wasn't a heterosexual thing. So she done had her dip in the lady pool. So, But she chose to go with uh, a male. So she did her experimenting, and that's what she came up with. But she said, Ain't nothing wrong with it, girls. It ain't nothing wrong with it. All right. Okay. Then we got that. Then Heavenly said Andy was messy for bringing up the sip and paint and him asking her why she lied about not looking at the uh, man's penises and stuff and saying that, uh, what was it? something she had said and then uh she told him to go on to something else he said now uh why don't i go on with this and, and show you receipts that you were wrong we saw how close you got with them men but then you don't want damien to sit there or damon to do nothing i was like go ahead and go ahead get her get her together get her together and then you said you're gonna bring receipts and we know you got them <laughs> 
<laughs> then Dr. Heaven gonna say, I didn't know y'all were gonna show all that. I'm like, girl, what show have you been on for the uh, last four, four or five seasons, six seasons? Are you kidding me? <sighs> Dr. Heavenly, Dr. Heavenly, have you been on all seven? I don't know. I'm confused with you. But anyway, we move on from that situation. We got um, the shade that Dr. Jackie brings on Buffy about being infertile. And, and, and the last episode, they shows the clips and everything. And um, Dr. Jackie looking so mean and Dr. Heaven looking so mad. I'm like, good God, y'all are a sight for sore eyes in the worst way. You know what I'm saying? But that was an eye-opening experience for Dr. Jackie because she really got a chance to look at herself on camera looking and hearing her actions playing before her and she probably thought about damn people really think i'm awful because if i was just sitting looking in from the outside i would think that person was awful for doing that too and this is what she's trying to tell us now is that a calculated move to get her out of the move if somebody uh, reporting her to the professional medical association maybe it is but she sure gave a heartfelt sincerity move right then and there to miss buffy parcel and went over there and hugged her and said she would give her only child to buffy and even told buffy i would love to deliver your baby because buffy had said also that her husband and her or her husband gave her permission to go on and let Let's try a surrog surrogate person with us. And of course, Jackie had said she done start her own sur surrogacy um, medical uh, profession. And uh, she would love to have a consultation be done. I don't know if the same woman that carried Shadina who carried Candy Burris, baby. She would carry... Um, it ain't no what's her name? Buffy Parcells, baby, or not. It would be a very lucrative move, but, you know... Maybe not. Uh, maybe she'll get someone else. Whatever. She needs to seek Jackie's services or seek someone else Jackie can refer her to. And I wouldn't be, I wouldn't think it's a good idea for Dr. Jackie to deliver your baby because if something went wrong, you'll probably bring Dr. Jackie for it and you'll bring up all this past beef that y'all had. So, no, you might can refer her to someone. Uh, a surrogacy or you can use dr jackie's surrogacy program but i don't think i think that's like a conflict of interest especially that y'all work together y'all know each other um so well i don't think it would be a good idea for dr jackie and dr jack I don't even know why you put it in your mouth and had it come out or put it in your brain to come out your mouth that you would deliver her baby before before her uh, if she would allow you to, that that, that, ain't, that ain't good. Okay, we'll draw that statement. Just refer her to somebody else. Or better let let's Dr. Simone do it, okay? Because she's a GYN professional and she does deliver babies as well. I mean, uh, Olive Branch was out there and that's a good, good mm. That's a good gesture, but I, I don't think, no. <laughs> let's not do that, okay? But uh, they seem to have gotten on the right track and well, call her, uh, Simone was just very upset about uh, the uh, relationship that Dr. Jackie has formed with Dr. Heavenly, and they have been stressed and strained. And you know, Dr. Uh, Dr. Simone sitting up there crying and carrying on because she really just miss her friend. And I don't, like I said, Jackie gets out the take another step back and look and see hey i ain't saying choose between the two dr jackie but you were closer to dr simone and i don't know what dr heavenly is putting in your ears or why you just going with her i'm sure some money moves somewhere down the line because i can't see you forging a true friendship with dr heavenly unless dr heavenly is telling you some stuff that probably need to be sought out through a counselor or whatever because uh, you're not a counselor, Dr. Heavenly. And, I mean, not Heavenly, but Dr. Jackie, you, you are an OBGYN specialist. You know what I'm saying? If you want to go to school, you still, it will be unethical for you to uh, take on your friends as uh, clients because you just know too much about them. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's just not ethical. Okay, and then you wouldn't be biased because you know certain things about them. If they're coming to you about those things, you can't be very centered and focused on helping them because you know the parties involved so it just wouldn't be an ethical thing so I, I i don't know it don't seem like dr simone is gonna stop locking 
uh, Dr. Hamlin for the negative, and it don't seem like Dr. Hamlin is going to start being negative towards Simone. And I think it has a lot to do with the husbands. Now, the husbands are fine. They ain't like women. <coughs> you could talk about my wife all day long. <coughs> I'm going to get you together, but then we're going to go play golf and, 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 and go for, see some football games, right? <laughs> We're going to say we ain't going to talk about our wife because they ain't that important to be messing up our friendship or what we got going on. Okay, just long you don't hear her, you don't do that. They, they cool. And I don't understand why women can't have that type of relationship with each other. But the whole dynamics with a man, they don't get, they're not wired like women. We hold on to stuff. We just that in third. Men like, okay, let's not talk about this, but we're going to go see this football game and have some beers afterwards, right? <laughs> Woo, boy. <coughs> Excuse me, I got a tickle in my throat. <coughs> Should have bought some water up here, but anyway, we just gonna just you know pretty much say we need uh, uh, Dr. Simone and Dr. Um, Jackie to just get off camera and just decide. Look, we gonna have to do this friendship thing, or we gonna have to do this public relations thing while we're on this show. We gonna have to be cordial, but. You know, what's what it going to be? <laughs> Y'all need to figure that one out because it, it was just too much. It was a touching scene, but it was just too much. Either Y'all going to rock with each other on the show and off or y'all not going to rock at all. But that would be sad to see our friendship end up in the gutter when y'all had this friendship prior to getting on the show. But y'all worked that mess out. OK, then we got um. Let me see. <laughs> I forgot a part. Forgot about the part when Buffy and Dr. Hamlin was going at it and this, that, and third. And of course, Dr. Hamlin saying, Buffy just doing this because it ain't about her not being able to have kids and this, that, and third. She just want to be seen. She just want to be the it factor. You know, Dr. Hamlin just going on and on. And Buffy was like, Do you just shut up with them, um, them dentures you talking through or whatever? And then Dr. Hamlin, you know, going to go for the custom. Something that's very obvious that everybody can see. She gonna call Buffy fat. <laughs> she, she gonna put the ass on to it, okay? And then, and they were like, wait a minute, hold, hold, hold up, oh, because he was just going back and forth between the ladies arguing. He couldn't, he didn't want to say, shut up, because he ain't used to seeing saying shut up the Buffy because Buffy been through a lot on the show he saw her break down so he was trying to give empathy towards her but he really just put his hands around <laughs> on Dr. Heaven and shake her every which way but loose you hear me <laughs> he was just too tired of Dr. Heaven yeah, he was fed up to hear with her but he was like wait a minute did you call her fat <laughs> Oh Lord, that was so that was just outrageous. And I was laughing my behind off last night too for part one and part two, mostly part two, but <laughs> she said, yeah, I call it well, what is it? Yeah, I call it fat. Yeah, what? So <laughs> I'm like, give Dr. Heaven a drink because she definitely need to calm down. But um, she's pretty much saying stop playing the victim, this, that, and third. And, of course, Dr. Jackie gives the olive branch out to Buffy, gives her. I mean, it was just all over the place. But that's all I had for uh, part one of uh, the reunion for season seven, episode 16, for Married to Medicine. Okay. They were showing the season's biggest moments, biggest blowout. So. Hopefully y'all liked my review on that. We're going to if you like the review part 1, you're going to love the review on part 2. So check back with me and uh, if it's say 30 minutes and I have that one loaded up for you as well. Okay, but if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to my channel Deb Chanel Sports where and as you should know, I am Deb Chanel. Okay, y'all, y'all be having peace with one another and whenever you look at this video, get ready to laugh. I know that's all I can say. Get ready to laugh and get ready for part 2. Okay? And I will see you on the next video. <laughs> Bye-bye. <coughs>